Jim Irsay came out last night at like 1 a.m. our time and was dropping bombs on the timeline. Did you happen to see any of these or no? No, I, I saw the one that you texted me. Let me pull it up real quick. You uh, He said, you can see clear as day, the final eight NF- NFL well, that doesn't make any sense that you said it like that. But playoff teams, you need a QB and offense who can score 30 or more in regulation and a defense that can hold an opponent under 30. So I really think that this man was probably fucked up when he, texted, when he put this on there because some of it don't make sense. But uh, I think it all makes sense, just not grammar-wise. Yeah, grammar. I mean, his grammar's bad, Maybe but his what he's saying is pretty true. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty true. His grammar was kind of messed up in it. But uh, – yeah, He's spot on. He literally put in there, you need a QB who can score 30 or more in regulation. It's pretty bad. That, that, is that a sign that Carson Wentz is like out again? We're going to talk about this? That, that's a sign that uh, he might not have trust in his old quarterback there. Um, he also put some more stuff in there. Um, he, just after that one, he says, I am on the West Coast, so it's 11.15 p.m., but I do stay up late. Creative thinking comes in the silence sometimes, and nobody is watching the gold late at night, early morning. And then he came out with a video this morning talking about willingness opens the door to God's direction and faith, hashtag willingness. I don't know if that is football-related or if, is that more like religion-related, relate, but willingness, you can kind of hint on that. Um the willingness to go make a play as an organization to maybe get a better quarterback. I don't, I don't know if we're reaching now. Um, but I just think it's Jim Irsay being Jim Irsay. He's not going to let this stuff go. Um, you would think usually this is the point where some silence starts to creep in uh, before, you know, the playoffs are still going on. Your team's eliminated. You already did the end of the season presser. What else do you have to say? Um, but Jim Irsay is still being loud and vocal on the timeline. What are your thoughts? I think that, okay, one, obviously has a pass, but the thing is, I think really, I think he might, since he says on the West Coast, he might, you know, just be away from kind of the Colts, you know, area, and he's kind of thinking in his own head. Uh, maybe the, the, there needs to be some changes here. Like, obviously, we're not at seeing, I mean, we put up 30, more than 30 points, but we give up a lot of points too sometimes. So Carson Wentz, I think. He's- so so right when I was just I just pulled it up to clarify what you just said. The offense scored thirty or more in regulation in seven of seventeen games. We did it against the Texans, Niners, Titans, Jets, Bills, Bucks, and Texans again. The defense held the opponent to to thirty and under in fifteen of seventeen games. Only teams we didn't do that against is Titans and Bucks. So the defense did their thing. Yeah. The offense only seven games of this season. That's and I don't think not wrong. if you're as a Colts player, I don't think they should like this. Isn't something that he's like bashing the Colts for straight on exactly. He's kind of just making it a point like that's yeah. what you need to focus on. He's not look saying, at the teams remaining and look what they're doing. Yeah, it's straight facts. Like he's not saying like Indy, like look, uh, you're not doing this. He's just saying like that's what we need to like focus on really. And yeah, I don't think Carson Wentz is really the quarterback to do this. Uh, and We've been talking about it every podcast, like Pasco podcast, like Carson. That's the big discussion with is the yeah. Colts and the quarterback again for the I third agree. straight off season. And the thing is, is Ballard likes to come out and say that he doesn't want a, a band aid quarterback. So like, really, I don't know about that. Like, I don't know what he considers a band aid quarterback. Uh, Philip Rivers was a band aid quarterback. Yeah, but Philip Rivers is Philip Rivers. Like, like, I, and I guess, I guess to say, I kind of. I'm wrong with that because the Colts wanted Phillip Rivers back again. Because remember, right after the Buffalo loss, Frank Reich said, I want Phillip Rivers as Nick next week, week one. It was yeah. a band aid in Phillip's eyes because he decided to retire. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I mean, that leads to another discussion. Like, as in the Colts, like, we've already talked about who they want, but I don't know if you saw the Pat McAfee show where he said, <laughs> Did you see that? I saw what he said. Yeah. He was like, But man, I, I really hope, I mean, the odds of that's not like zero to. I don't know, but the Colts don't. So let's get right into it. The Colts do not have the capital or any kind of asset to trade for an Aaron Rodgers or a Russell Wilson or a Derek Carr. They don't have a first round pick. Any team that they call, they're going to get hung up on because they don't even. That's like the basis for any big time trade is a first rounder. But then you got to think about The Colts don't have any of that. We also brought up like we do have key players though. And the thing is, is you don't want to just. That, that's really bad on the morale on the team to just get rid of a player that's good. 
Um, yeah. Someone that's like, for example, you're not going to trade someone like Darius Leonard. That's that's one thing you're not going to do. But like someone like Ryan Kelly, that was brought up to Which trade. Which we brought up. We yeah. brought up that up last episode. For the car. They need a center. Um, 